Margaret is an interview coach. She's also an award-winning blogger. She has done her master's in marketing and management. She's speaking to us all the way from the United States, sorry, United uh, Kingdom. She <laughs> is one of U LinkedIn UK's power profiles in HR. She has over 15 years of experience in recruiting across all levels, across EMEA, that is Europe, Middle East, and Africa. She has spoken in various career events as well as conferences. She's a passionate coach, as well as she's helped thousands of job seekers to get their dream jobs worldwide. I mean, there's so much of Margaret to speak about because I think I'm just touching on the iceberg when I say these things. She has been featured in Cosmopolitan Magazine. She has been interviewed by Financial Times as well as Management Today. She has written two eBooks. One of them is Land the Job, and the second is Get the Job That You Want. And I hope Margaret gives us some insights on that today. She has been recognized as the top career influencer to follow. She has top career blogs 20, 2020. Believe me, I have so much to tell about Margaret, but I want to give her as much of time on this because we have so much to learn from her. So over to you, Margaret. I will uh, request Santos to stop. You can uh, share a slide, please. Fantastic. One, one moment. Um, I'll share a screen. Thank you for accepting our invite to come here. We are oh, really privileged. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. So let me, let me. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and good evening to everyone. It's nice. Good evening to everyone who's watching um, tonight. Um, the topic of tonight is how to make the interview shortlist. Um, of course, that's never guaranteed, but um, especially in the current times when there's so much more, uh, the, the job market is so much more competitive. It's really important that we understand how we increase our chances um, of getting that interview and then getting um, a job offer. So what we will look at today um, is the most effective methods of looking for, for, for a job. Um, we'll look at how to improve your online networking skills. Um, obviously, with the global lockdowns and people not necessarily working from offices, all of the networking has moved um, online. Um, I will also share a bit about what recruiters are looking for on a CV or resume. I'm, I'm using it's the same word. I mean, we use CV in, in the UK and, and in Europe, but resume in the US, and, and how also to utilize keyword optimization how to tailor your CV to specific positions, um, and finally, how to identify your value proposition and how to quantify achievements um, on your CV. So we have very action-packed half an hour, and let's get started, and I'll be very happy to answer any questions you might have um, after this um, brief presentation. Um, so I won't introduce myself again because um, Anita has done it very well. Thank you so much. Um, but yes, I, I have mostly recruited for um, global um, technology companies, but also mid-sized companies and startups. You can see some names um, on the screen. Um, and I have indeed recruited very internationally. Um, while I haven't done, well, my recent experience has been uh, mostly recruiting in Europe, but I've done some recruitment in the Middle East um, and in Africa many years ago. Um, and in terms of my interview coaching, I've actually done, I've had even recently um, clients from Dubai, from, the, uh, from Saudi Arabia um, as well. So, you know, I have clients in Africa. Um, and I've even been to Saudi Arabia to train some recruiters on, on interview skills. I was invited by a public investment fund, which was very interesting three years ago. So I have a little bit of experience in, um, in, in that region. Um, but I think, you know, while the local markets are, of course, different, the principles of selling yourself in job interviews, they're really pretty, pretty much the same, even though, of course, every company will have a, a different interview process. So I very much hope that the examples I'll be sharing today um, will be useful to you um, if you are, especially if you're a corporate job seeker um, and really no matter what, what, what country you are in. So um, let's just go briefly through some of the um, job search methods. Um, so networking is the one I will cover actually on the, on the next slide, but um, networking is really the, the, the method that I would recommend the most because when you look at how many jobs are filled through networking, it's actually a pretty high percentage, especially if they are executive positions. Um, unfortunately, many job seekers, they just rely on job boards, and that's probably the most ineffective method there is. Um, and a lot of job seekers apply via job boards because I think they just feel they're being productive, they feel they do something, but unfortunately, um, a lot of the jobs on, on job boards, they're kind of out of date. Um, often by the time you apply, the job might be 
um, already filled or on a final interview stage. So it's not that you can't get a job from applying on job boards. I got jobs like that in the past. Um, I've certainly got um, jobs applying on LinkedIn. Um, but if you just rely on that, honestly, you could be looking for, for work for a very long time. So um, it's also very, so, you know, social media, of course, um, you know, LinkedIn is the platform that I'm sure all of us use um, and as recruiters definitely use LinkedIn um, to, to find candidates. So again, it's very important that you have a strong LinkedIn profile with strong summary section and headline and um, relevant keywords and quantifiable achievements. We'll talk a little bit about that later um, in the context of a CV, but the same applies to LinkedIn. Um, I would also definitely recommend uh, creating a target list of, of organizations um, that interest you um, and then set up job alerts um, to, you know, not every organization will advertise on a job board. Um, so it, it's really important that you have a list of, you know, 10, 20, 30 of um, list of target companies that interest you and try to connect with recruiters. They try to connect with decision makers. You know, you want to start networking within those organizations. So if an opportunity comes, you will be top of mind um, to, to be contacted. So having a target list of organizations um, is very important, even just to connect with recruiters um, and staffing firms, agencies, um, they can definitely help. But, you know, in my experience, if you have like a very linear career progression, so, you know, you have kind of climbed the career ladder in a similar position, then it's easy for you to be placed. Unfortunately, if you are a career changer, if you are someone who maybe has had a long career gap, agencies typically will not be able to help you because they get paid only if they, you know, they, they get paid if they present the candidate that fits the brief that the client has given them. Um, and typically they, the client is looking for someone who, you know, looks like a perfect match to a specific position. So if you are a career changer, it's probably not going to work. So, you know, you, you, can, you can still try, but in general, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't rely on agencies as such. Um, but the networking bit, you know, it's very important because sometimes I will speak to people and they're like, oh, you know, I don't have a network or, you know, I don't know how to network. And maybe you are new in a country, you know, maybe you have just moved to a specific country and you just don't really have that network yet. So how do you actually, how do you get that network? So firstly, um, I would definitely think of your that primary network, you know, who are the people that you have worked with? who can, you know, and how many of them know that you are currently looking for work? Because sometimes I will ask my interview coaching clients, well, how many people know that you're looking for work? And they're like, oh, you know, my family knows, but really all of your contacts and um, people, you know, that you've worked with, your, your bosses, if you can get some recommendations, I would definitely do that. I remember once um, I've, lost, I've lost the job I had, we're talking 15 years ago, and I've emailed my entire network and just mentioned what happened and I've mentioned what I was looking for and I was very specific and, would you believe that four days later, one of my previous colleagues from my previous company, she, mess she emailed me this job that she found on LinkedIn and I actually didn't see it on LinkedIn for some reason. And that's the job I got later. I applied and I, I got the job. So, you know, you just never know. Um, but your contact, your contact need to know what, what is it that you, are, um, that you are looking for. And also, let's say you are new in a specific country. You might want to conduct some informational interviews. So most people are willing to help if you only ask in the right way. Um, so you might want to, as I, I mentioned, creating a list of target companies that interest you. You might want to identify decision makers so like, I mean, let's say you work as a marketing manager and you really want a job as another marketing manager. You might want to connect with your potential bosses, so say marketing directors or, or chief marketing officers um, in your, the co companies that interest you. Do some research. I actually have a, um, I can send that link later, Anita. I have a specific template. I have this article on LinkedIn, how to increase your chances of the hiring manager coming back to you. So I give some tips, like specific template. I mean, you need to do your research, but then use that template to increase the chances of someone actually coming back to you. So I'll be very happy to share that. You um, definitely look forward yeah, to that. You can, share, you can share it under the, 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 the YouTube video. I just need to remember remembered about that now. So again, reach out to them and you can even, don't ask people for a job because no stranger will offer you a job. You know, it's, it's kind of putting and puts people under too much pressure but you might just want to ask for 10 minutes of the time or you know ask if they can recommend another company seem like you know you, you can just ask for something you know you might just want to ask for informational interview to find out more about you know the different roles within a company and what advice they would have for you etc etc so you know networking like your best contacts in general will be insiders so people who work for a specific company but 
honestly, don't just ask for a job because I actually find it, I, you know, I work in recruitment, mind you, not right now, my last contract um, ended at the end of March, but as a recruiter, you typically receive a lot of um, direct approaches. And in general, I don't mind, I'm happy to help people, but a lot of people don't even bother clearly looking at my profile because, you know, if you look at my profile on LinkedIn, you would have seen I've, I've recruited in the tech sector or e-commerce for, you know, 14, 15 years. But sometimes I will get a CV from someone in oil and gas sector or investment banking and they're like, well, have you got a job for me? I'm like, no, read my profile. Like, you know, don't waste, like do your research before you contact someone to increase your chances. Um, so don't just contact random people. Again, sometimes what I see, people you know and they just really don't have a clue they would send the same email to 30 recruiters and they will put them on bcc like don't do that you have to be sending personalized messages um so never just ask for a job someone that you don't know because they aren't likely to help you and most people won't be able to help you directly but they might be able to help you indirectly so they might be able to refer you to someone or you know maybe maybe they can tell you who the hiring manager is for a specific position or maybe they can just give you some advice um, so in general, um, when you do speak to someone, um, you might just want to find out how they see the industry or what's going on or what the companies like to work for. And of course, you do some research first to show that, you know, you've, you've done some research on the company um, and you ask some relevant, relevant questions, if they know of any relevant openings, you know, or like when maybe what's the person you, you could be contacting, who could be a decision maker in the department that you are interested in. Um, but yes, don't ask your network directly to help you find a job, especially if you don't know them, because why would they, you know, help you? Don't put them under pressure and just don't just talk about yourself, you know, so, um, so that, that will be um, important to remember. So how, how to improve your networking skills? Firstly, if you have a network, and you know, most of us, if we have been working at all, um, we have some kind of network. So always focus your networking on the people that you know first before reaching out to strangers, because clearly you are more likely to get a response if you email your previous colleagues, you know, people from your university or, you know, your previous managers, your previous clients, you are more likely to get a response than if you contact a complete stranger. Um, so if you know someone who works for a company, you know, you might like to work for, you can contact them, or you know someone who knows someone who works for a company you, you're interested in. So um, if you don't know the person, but they work for a target company, again, I would maybe try to find something that you have in common with them or someone or, or, or something in common, but start with people that you know. So in general, you know, when you email someone um, and, you know, you are a job seeker, don't ask for too much too soon. You know, if you just, if someone sent me an email and, you know, if they, Kind of mention something you know specific like let's say i'm recruiting for a company if someone sends me a brief email um they briefly mention they're interested in our company they mention why maybe they say i haven't seen any relevant jobs but i i can do xyz maybe they mention something about what value they bring if they just ask me you know something about other likely to be positions in that area or you know who can i contact within a company related to that area i will definitely help them you know, but if they sent me this massive email and they're like, can you review my CV and do we have, you know, do you have any jobs for me? They haven't done the research. I'm less likely to help because you should make it easy for, for, for the recruiter or the hiring manager to contact you. So, you know, be clear in stating the information you want and often it's just the information. You want to make the um, sh like short paragraphs. Don't send a massive long message to someone um, that, that you haven't um, spoken to before. Um, and if you have someone's email and there are a lot of tools that will enable you to find someone emails address I actually literally forgot the names right now, but you, you can just Google that. There are some free tools that will help you um, identify someone's email. So, you know, not everyone checks the LinkedIn messages daily. I mean, I do, but not, not everyone does. So if you have their email, I would probably send an email first. So what to include in your email? And I will send, show you an example in a, in a second. So if you contact someone uh, and if, if it's a job networking email, you know, personalize the message first. You might, you know, you just be friendly. I mean, you don't need to have that, that much of a chit chat, but try to personalize it. Like you don't want to sound, you don't want to seem like if you're sending the same message to 20 different people. Um, if you've had some contact before, just remind them how, how you know each other. So it doesn't have to be a previous work colleague. It could be someone that you met at a conference five years ago, you know, and maybe they now work for the company that interests you. So remind them how you know each other, state what you're looking for. So maybe it's advice, maybe it's information, maybe it's recommendation then concisely remind them of your background so i'm literally talking three four sentences and then you know thank them for, for the time so that's just like a basic structure you you will you will get the slides um, and that's just an example of a, a short message that you might want to send out um, to request an informational meeting so 
I'm not going to read through all of that, but you know, just to talk you through the structure. So, you 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 mentioned why you're reaching out, yes. Right? So, you, there are a few different reasons. I hope that you might be able to help. Then you mention what is it that you are actually looking for, and you know, you mentioned that you are asking for an informational meeting or you know, informational interview. So, you know, most people will be willing to give you 15 minutes of their time if you send a strong email. Not everyone will respond, so don't take it personally, but. Most people would be willing to help. And then, you know, you can send a personalized, like your insight and advice in these areas would be valuable. And you, again, you mentioned something specific about why you think they might be able to help you. And then just, you know, thank you in advance for any help you can provide. So that's very simple, you know, send several of those messages and someone will respond and that can definitely move your job search forward, especially if you don't have a network in a specific country. So like, let's say you have just moved to Dubai, right? From another country, you maybe don't have, well, I guess, Maybe a bit silly to move during a pandemic, but still, you know, let's suppose you've just done that. Um, you know, that that's something that you can do. You can say you have, you know, 10 years of experience in XYZ, you've just moved, um, you're looking to expand your network, you know, you've heard of these companies, who else they can potentially recommend um, or, or what advice can they give you? So again, not everyone will respond, but some, some people will. So let me just briefly talk you through what recruiters are looking for on a CV, and I will share some specific example of, of, of a CV as well. Um, so firstly, the recruiter will be looking at your most recent position. So that's really the, well, the, the, you know, firstly, they look at your most recent position, but also like the summary section on, I will send you any, I will show you, I will actually share an example later on the screen of, of a format that I would recommend of a CV. Um, so in general, it's good to have a strong summary section and skill section that you will be tailoring to a specific position, but, on, apart from that, your most recent position. I mean, that, that's obviously the, uh, typically is the most important one that recruiters will be looking at. Um, so that's definitely the section that you should spend most of your time um, working on. So make sure that um, you have some specific tangible achievements. Many CVs RC are very duty oriented. So the person will mention responsible for this, you know, or duties included. But often I look at CVs and honestly, let's say I have 20 CVs, 50 CVs, whatever, even if it's five, I can't tell how good you are based on the CV. I mean, okay, you've been there for five years. I guess you are good because they wouldn't have kept you there for that long. But honestly, I often can't tell because there are just responsibilities and nothing about the quantifiable achievements. And I will show you how to quantify your achievements in, on, on, the, on the future slides. Um, so, um, so yeah, the most most recent position, do you have, do you, can you do the job, you know, do you have relevant achievements? Company recognition, you know, if I'm, for example, like if, you're, if I'm working in the technology space and if someone say worked for Amazon, you know, there are some pretty blatant associations that I can make, you know, so let's say you work for Amazon, well, you probably, you know, used to working at, at Pace and maybe you've worked on some large scale projects. Maybe you work for some well-known startup, you know, then again, you probably used to wearing many hats, etc. So if you are a recruiter working in a specific sector, there are some pretty blatant associations that you can make based on your experience. I mean, they're not always accurate, of course, but if you work for a company that maybe is not well known or, you know, a recruiter might not have heard of that, I would actually recommend that you maybe have one line or two lines summary, you know, just, just yeah, of what, what, what the company is doing. Then also like we look at, you know, your overall experience, your story, your career progression. Is there a career progression? You know, we look at the job title. So first, have you progressed at all? If you've had progression within the same organization, like let's say just from sales associate to senior sales associate, you know, make it clear on your CV as well to show that progression. So it doesn't seem that you've been working eight years in the, in the, in the same position. Um, also, do the titles make sense? You know, if you are a VP of marketing in a five people company, I'm not saying anyone can do that, but that's very different to being a VP of marketing in a Fortune 500 company. Um, so that, that's what we're looking at. Gaps. Now, you know, it does happen that people have gaps, you know, maybe, maybe you've taken time out to have children or um, you, you decided to set up your own business and then maybe it didn't work. Maybe you just decided it wasn't for you. I think gaps in general are fine as long as there's sufficient explanation. Um, it would only make me wonder if there's like, you know, a big gap and there's no explanation. So. Um, if you've had some unusual career moves, you might want to explain that in, in a cover letter, or if you have some longer gaps, I'll probably explain it as well. Keywords are very important. So what are the keywords that come up on the job descriptions that you are interested in? And I am talking mostly about the hard skills because most companies will be looking for someone who's 
you know, good communication skills and good at working under pressure, but this, this is not going to make you stand out like that, you know, most, CV, most job seekers would put those keywords on the CV, but what are the specific keywords on the job description? So if I'm looking for a JavaScript engineer, of course, that keyword would need to be on your, on your CV. If you work in finance, maybe you use some specific um, uh, program. So again, that, that should be on your CV as well. So just make sure that when you are looking at a job description, if there's something that you've done, but it's actually not maybe on your CV for whatever reason, make sure you add it and actually use similar wording, you know? Um, and also when you have a summary section, that's really the section that you should be tailoring or the key core competencies section. You want the recruiter to look at your CV and know within three seconds of looking at your CV that you seem to have the skills that they are looking for. Um, so then the overall organization, of course, is important. Like, do you have, you know, good spelling and good grammar and there are a lot of great tools like Grammarly, for example, is really great, Grammarly. LY. Um, it's a free tool and, you know, really fantastic for, for checking your spelling. Um, and sometimes it's quite interesting. People will say that's one of, that one of the skills is great attention to detail, but then they have two spelling mistakes in their summary section, which doesn't create, create the best impression. And personal online footprint, that's not necessary, but if you have included a link to your LinkedIn profile or, you know, your GitHub, if you're an engineer, you know, I'm going to click. So, just in general, you know, make sure that you haven't got any information online that maybe could be used against you, that could be negative. Um, so, you know, we're all entitled to our personal life, but I, I've seen situations, I've, I've actually seen a situation, well, I, I've heard of a situation when um, a friend of mine, she worked for another company, it's also a medium-sized tech company, but global, and they didn't hire a senior marketing person because they've done some research on him online and basically in most of the pictures the guy was like drinking or you know half naked pictures it just didn't create the best impression and that was like marketing and PR role so they didn't hire him because of that because of the pictures they found online so uh, you just might want to be careful with what you put what you, what you put online um, so you have to remember uh, uh, Margaret sorry to interrupt so the app which you mentioned was Grammarly right yeah Grammarly Grammar, as in grammar, like grammar word, and then L-Y, Grammarly, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Actually, the, uh, there are some people in the audience who, if you could speak a little soft, uh, slowly, it would be yes. really appreciated. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. So yes. you also need to remember that employers don't buy skills, they buy solutions. So whenever you send your CV, you know, ask yourself, like, how, how would the employer know why, I, you know, how, how would they know that I'm good at the job? So let me just show you, um, show you an example. So as you can see on the left, that, that's kind of typical, maybe summary to what I would see on, on, a, on a typical CV. So seasoned project manager who excels at identifying and solving problems. I mean, I can't tell how good you are at the job when you look at that. Yes, yeah? so that's simply a feature. Like you also need to <coughs> add a benefit um, so, so that you have a unique selling point. So when you look at the example on the right, I mean, you don't need to have these specific numbers, but you can clearly see that, you can clearly see what value that person is bringing to the role, yes? So you can see they're good at identifying problems, they've saved, you know, large amount of money. So it's not actually about the numbers, but you just want to make sure that you have some quantifiable achievements. So whenever you've done something that saved time, saved money, made money, maybe you've streamlined the procedure, Maybe you've received fantastic press coverage. Maybe you've received great feedback. Maybe you've retained or attracted a certain number of customers. Try to quantify that. So um, let me, so we, we, I will actually sh sh share, share some examples. But in general, um, if you want to create a, a strong CV, um, I will share example um, in, in a moment. Um, you really need to understand what the company is looking for. What I find is that a lot of people, you know, they kind of have this spray and pray approach. They're so desperate to find a job. And I can understand, you know, I'm, I'm looking for another recruit, right recruitment role myself. And I know it's hard because there aren't that many jobs available. And, you know, I completely understand why you might be feeling a little bit desperate and stressed about money. But you are, you are, so what a lot of people do, they just look at the job title. They will maybe skim through the job description and they will just send the CV without tailoring that specific CV. You know, it's actually a big mistake because I would recommend um, that you send fewer applications, but you tailor them to a specific position um, rather than sending loads of applications without changing your CV at all. And, you know, then you're wondering why you are not getting any response. So 
different titles can also mean different things in many different organizations. Um, in some organizations, as an example, account manager is account manager managing the relationships with the client, but in some organizations I've worked for, like software companies, this is typically a very highly paid software salesperson. So you really need to understand the job before you apply. So fine tune your keywords and customize your CV for every single position that you are applying for. And actually it doesn't have to take that long at all. Um, it's not about changing your entire CV because of course your experience is, it is what it is. Um, but you just want to make sure that you have um, very specific accomplishments listed on your CV. And I would always recommend that you have a summary section on top of the CV or key competencies, key skills section, or just one or the other depending on your level of experience. And that's where you would draw the recruiter's attention um, that you have the skills that, that they are looking for. So again, what are the hard skills listed on the, on, on the job description? And if you have these skills, make sure that's included um, on your CV. Also, don't apply for jobs you aren't qualified for. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have 100% um, of the requirements um, listed because often the job description is listed with a perfect candidate in mind and the perfect candidate might not exist. So you don't need to have all of the qualifications, but I sometimes used to get, you know, there was this one per person candidate when I was at Expedia, he applied for 25 positions, none of which he was qualified for. So can you just see, like, I could not take someone like that seriously, even if there was finally a job that he was qualified for. Um, you will sometimes have students applying for sales director role. I mean, it's just like, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? I, I completely appreciate that sometimes it's um, difficult to understand the level of the position. So you might apply for a role that's too junior or too senior. That, that's fine, that, that will happen. But honestly, if you don't have the main experience, again, just to give you another example, I remember I was looking for a, a German speaking someone, I think some kind of marketing position, German speaker. And the, the, the German was a must. It wasn't nice to have. It was actually a must. The person would be working in German uh, with the German market. It was the number two requirement on the job description. Guess what? Less than 20% of people who've applied actually spoke German. So, you know, if you do that, it's just a, just a complete waste of your time. Um, it's also important that you highlight your relevant ac accomplishments. So as I mentioned, a lot of CVs I see, they either don't have achievements at all, um, they just have duties, responsibilities, or the achievements are not actually quantifiable. So where, what I mean quantifiable, you want to have some numbers, you want to have some results that show the impact of your work. So um, I, again, I will, I will share some examples shortly. And you want to tailor your summary um, to, to match the job description as well. So if there are any specific you know, words on the job description, you have that experience, make sure that it's clear to the recruiter within seconds of looking um, at your CV. So in terms of achievements, so I, I've just mentioned that it's important to highlight your achievements. So you want to quantify your experience as much as you can. So if you save time or money, you've increased sales or customer satisfaction, this will impress the interviewer. And that goes both for your CV and your LinkedIn profile. So here are some examples here. Coordinated team events at the best yet economical location, saving expenses by 30%. Or the second example, introduce a user-friendly electronic filing system, which reduce file retrieval time by 40%. Well, I guess you need to explain how it reduced by 40%, right? You can't just like make up those numbers. Um, or attain the title of best employee of 2019 by providing excellent customer service. So these are just some examples. Whatever you can say to, to show that you are good at the job, then I would definitely include that on, on the CV. So, here is in general how you can work on identifying your achievements. I'm sure that many of you are aware with the star format or power uh, format of um, answering competency-based questions in a job interview. So situation, task, action, result, or problem, action, result. Um, obviously on a CV, you only need one or two sentences. You don't need the whole star example, but that can help you um, to, to you know, just create some achievements. So um, firstly, in the problem, action, um, you, you summarize the problem or the challenge and explain the context. So provide some information about the, the scale. So maybe you are working on something within tight timeframes or during a major reorganization, like paint the picture so they can understand um, the complexity of your work. Um, then in the action, and that actually goes for how you answer the interview questions as well. Tell them what you did, 
and, and explain your contribution because I do understand that sometimes you work as part of a team, but at the same time, you have to use some strong action verbs. So don't say I was responsible for or my duties included. Use some strong action verbs like I managed, I led, I initiated. Yes, so, so use some of these strong action verbs. And then the result, and that really goes both for your interview answers and for your CV, um, is that you explain the business impact of your actions. And that's really one of the biggest mistakes that I see why people don't get jobs. You know, they don't talk enough about the results. They talk about what they've done, but not about what they've achieved and what were the contributions. So you want to include some of the contributions from employers' point of view. So for example, deputized as a team supervisor for a team of five and let, oh, actually this is spelling it out, let the team successfully in completing a 250,000 project in upgrading the company's sales order entry system. And then they mentioned the savings. Now, these numbers don't have to be that impressive. I don't have those numbers in my, in my job. So it's not about that, you know, it's absolutely not about that. It's just about showing how you've made an impact and you can, I can promise you, you can find some of that in every single position. You can quantify. I, I remember I was doing a workshop in an um, uh, organization that had a lot of social workers and they're like, oh, I don't know how to quantify my achievements. But actually you can still quantify. When I started asking them questions, um, I realized that, you know, like one of them, she, she, she typically worked on 50 cases per month and she was successfully closing 20 cases each month. So that's something that you can quantify. You don't have to be in a sales role um, to quantify your experience. So these are actually, these are the examples I've mentioned um, earlier. Um, but there are three easy ways to quantify your experience and you don't need to be in a sales position um, at all. So let me show you some examples. You might want to show how many. So when you look at these two examples, many CVs I see, they, they have something very generic, like ensured compliance with filing of annual forms. Look at the example on the right. At least you can mention 75 annual forms by seven different company departments. I mean, that's a lot more specific, isn't it? So you can show how many of something you've done, how many clients you're managing at one time, yes? How many projects you're managing at, at a specific time, how many clients you've attracted or retained in, in, a, in a specific year. Another way you can um, quantify your experience is to show how much. So for example, if you are an internal auditor, your CV could say, saved company money by finding ways to cut costs. What does it mean? I mean, did you cut costs by $10, $10 or you know, $100 million? Absolutely. Who knows? Who knows? No idea, no way of knowing, yes? Whereas the other one, you know, you've got some specific numbers. Um, and again, it's not about these numbers. It doesn't have to be that. It could be that you've saved 10,000. You know, it could be that you have streamlined the procedure and something that used to take four hours a month now takes an hour a month. That, that's a perfectly good example. So it's not about the, the, how big the numbers are. It's just about quantifying your experience. Um, and you can also show how often. So even a, a you know, pretty junior job of administrative assistant or a receptionist, um, sounds completely different when you give it some context. So for example, instead of saying on your CV, answered phones at the front desk, you might want to say, manage switchboard with 10 incoming lines, effectively receiving and routing an average of 500 calls per day. So if you are hiring for a receptionist, which one do you think you would contact? Yes, it's so much more specific. So definitely. Yeah, so that, that's something that, that, that's very important. Um, and you know, finally, um, I wanted to show you an example of what a good, that's pretty much like you know, what a good CV um, looks like. So obviously you have your name and contact details um, on, on top of the page, but then you might want to have your targeted job title. You don't have to, but I would recommend a summary section. So that's like a three to four lines, unique value statement, that's keyword optimized for optimal search. So you want to focus on two or three most important items in your targeted positions where you have achievements or expertise. So you might want to mention here your knowledge of specific industries, you know? Um, maybe you can say, I don't know, marketing manager with seven years of experience in the technology sector and expertise in, you know, whatever it is that you do. And if you are changing um, careers, if you're transitioning from a different career, I would mention here some of the transferable skills you have and also what industry are you actually interested in and what, what job you, you're looking for. 
And then that core competency section I've mentioned, I mean, you don't necessarily need both. You might just want to have one or the other, um, but I would have a few bullet points of what are the specific keywords on the job description that, are, that, that you actually have. And they also mentioned on, on the job description. And then when you talk about your experience, I'm not saying that you can't have any you know, responsibilities as such, but in general, you want to ask yourself, you want to, tr you, you want to try to quantify as many of your responsibilities as possible. So when you look at your, um, at your tasks in, in your job, ask yourself, how do you know that you did a good job? You know, and that should go on your CV, then describe what that good job looked like. Um, another way to write an achievement-based bullet point is to look how you saved money, made money, streamlined the process, or maybe you positively contributed to the culture. So, so be specific. Um, then if you're struggling, you know, like what did your colleagues came, come to you for? You know, what did they ask you about? Why was your manager or your coworkers or your clients happy with your work? You know, ask yourself these questions. What did your performance reviews say? You know, just think like dig deeper. What, what you know, really try to dig deeper as to what, what your unique value. Um, and also like start every bullet point with some action verb. So don't start responsible, don't start with responsibility, responsible for, or, you know, duties included. Um, ideally you want to have those action verbs. So, you know, accomplished or managed or led or initiated um, those, th those kind of keywords. So, so I know there's quite a <laughs> lot we have, we have gone through, uh, we have gone through already. Um, so, you know, if you um, have any, I mean, feel free to connect with me. I have a lot of resources, um, free resources on my LinkedIn. Feel free to send me a connection on LinkedIn. I have 65 articles on LinkedIn. Um, I would like to share with you. I have some, um, that article I've mentioned about how to increase that's actually an article on LinkedIn. I will I will just share how to increase um, your chances of the hiring manager coming back to you. Um, so so you can use that template. I will share that link with you as well, so you can share share under the video. Um, and yeah, you know there's loads of um, resources on my interview coachcouk page um, that you can see on top of the slide. Um, so if you have any questions, you're very welcome to email me and and, and visit the free resources page as well. So yeah, thank, thank you so you much. much. <laughs> I think it's Margaret. been an hour, but yeah, there was a lot of content to get through. Excellent content. I mean, uh, the amount of things that you have shared today was absolutely beautiful. Something which touched my nerve a lot was like when you put when you spoke about not pressurizing re the recruiters on LinkedIn. That really touched my nerve because that's something people generally do. You know, they would you would have random people coming and uh, you know connecting with you on linkedin and asking you just putting the cvs and just saying can you give me a job and as you rightly pointed out you should never contact people you do not know because they will not be able to help you and uh, that was so beautifully it just touched my nerve because that was exactly what i was thinking i do have some questions and i would uh, definitely like the audience to put in any questions if they have but one thing which i would like to know from you margaret is one of the things which most of the job seekers here uh, ask is how do you negotiate on a salary? Like when you have got an interview call, whether yeah. it's face to face, or how do you negotiate a salary um, in this okay. particular in the pandemic area? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you know the, the, there isn't one one fast rule because, as as you know, the different companies have different rules of salary negotiation. So some companies have um, some companies have a very specific range um, for a specific level, and you know there isn't much movement. Like they will typically offer you something in the middle of that salary range, um, but you know they, they might go a little bit higher, but. That the isn't like an unlimited amount. Some companies are much more open. They have some idea of what they want to open or what they want to offer, um, but they might be willing to negotiate. And that's typically smaller companies. I think most of the larger organizations I've worked for, they have pretty defined um, salary ranges. Um, so it really varies from company to company, but I would recommend that you so firstly, try to do some research on um, what you think someone with your experience should be earning. Um, I know this could be tricky sometimes because um, there are websites you can look up. So again, I'm not sure how popular they are in UAE because some of these websites are more US based, but in general, I would look at Glassdoor because Glassdoor has some information. Again, not always- Glassdoor, but, yeah, Glassdoor yeah. is uh, popular in UAE also. Yeah, Glassdoor I would look at, although it's not always um, accurate. Um, it's always accurate. Um, I would look at salary.com. I think that could be maybe more US pay scale. 
uh, payscale.com um, as well. Um, and also, um, at least in the UK, some recruitment agencies sometimes publish salary surveys for a specific market. So, for example, a few years ago, I used to recruit for um, a lot of digital marketing positions. And um, a few agencies, they would publish every single year, they would publish a salary survey for different roles, um, so different roles within digital marketing from you know, the most junior level to the most senior level and based by location, so London and outside of London. So try to maybe like even Google your job title plus salary survey. You I might think some of them, something. yes. But that, that's the people... that research. Um, if you are dealing with a recruitment agency, they should be able to tell you what the salary range for the position um, is. Um, if you are dealing with an internal recruiter, typically they will ask you, okay, what are your salary expectations? Um, you know, if you have to share that, I mean, ideally you would want to know roughly what, what the salary is first, but I would recommend giving a range. So again, based on your research, yes. So maybe you could say, I'm just going to pick up, you know, mention random numbers. I am looking, you know, the jobs I'm looking at pay between say 75 and 85,000. But I am flexible based on the on the requirements based on the requirements of the position, or I am ideally looking for you mention a range. Um, however, the job itself and the company, you know, is, is is really the most important factor. So, in general, I wouldn't recommend mentioning just your minimum number. I'm sure you have your minimum number in 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 your head, but if you just mention that minimum number, you are not likely to get anything more than that. So. Ideally, ask for a little bit more, and then you can hopefully negotiate or, or mention the range. Yeah, I think the mentioning the range is a good suggestion because I think if you uh, give a, di a direct ballpark figure, sometimes you might not get the job or not be shortlisted for the job. So yeah. if you have a range in mind, so you know it becomes gives the recruiter an option opportunity to discuss further. Yeah, and I think some of the uh, people in the chat have mentioned about Bates and Robert Half, which do salary surveys in UAE. Yes, exactly, Robert Half does it in the UK as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Payscale, indeed. So we do have a few of these out here. So I'm sure the yeah. job seekers can go to those sites and uh, look at their ranges for their salaries yeah. Um, yeah. one of the things yeah right. sorry i just sorry. want to comment because you, because you mentioned earlier you have these people contacting you you know with cvs i mean if you're a recruiter in general i expect to get cvs but just look at my profile it's not that you can't send your cv to a recruiter you can't but just make sure you're not sending your cv to any recruiter without actually checking what they do that's number one and another thing and i've noticed that actually in the middle east i don't see that in london so i see a recruiter in the middle east um posting i'm looking for they mentioned the position and i'm seeing hundreds of comments saying interested so this lady <laughs> got very interested interested no. that is not how you make yourself stand out because if i was a recruiter there's no way i would go through 200 interested profiles you know if you see opportunity like that message the recruiter and say you know i've seen that you're advertised this position this is why my experience is relevant you know can we speak so don't just say it. it's very lazy very, very lazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you're, uh, you're bang on said that word. It's a lazy way of looking out for a job. Yeah. And uh, people think that people will actually view your profile if you mention that. No. Uh, and uh, secondly, yeah, I like the maybe, fact. Maybe, five, maybe, but I've seen like 200. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, noticed that you had mentioned about also some very good points about how to uh, basically qualify and show how many when you're doing your CV, because I feel even while making the CV, many of them are so lazy to just copy your format without putting any intent behind the CV. So you have given some excellent points about quantifying it, mentioning it, because that will distinguish, you know, who's the right candidate for the recruiter. And if people do not get responses for the hundreds of applications, they need to know that their homework was not right. So that was a very good point that you had mentioned. So there's another question before I again uh, give it to the audience. There's another question which I had. You did mention, uh, you know, about uh, not to do, not to network with recruiters and also not to cold email people. So I saw it on one of your blogs. So could you give a little more insights about what you meant by that? No, I'm not sure what you said. Not, not sure. It's what, 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 it was one of the, this text, stop cold emailing. You had mentioned about it. So is it the same as not uh, reaching out to um, people you do not know? Is it in the same? I, I, I can't remember where, where I've said it. I'm just saying in general, like just, just personally your messages. I think, what, I don't remember which article you're, you're referring to. I mean, cold emailing someone is fine when you've done some research. But I see a lot of people who have done no research whatsoever and they send the same message to different recruiters. I mean, it's actually incredible. Like, do you seriously think you're going to get a job if you email 30 recruiters on the same email? 
you know, maybe that's what I meant because just to copy paste. Yeah, no, this the series is, and I actually I find it incredible that in this day and time, someone actually messaged me recently, and not just me, they messaged about ten other people. They were on BC, they were on like CC. So I'm like, you actually emailing all of us? <laughs> I mean, trying to save time, right? But I've, I've never even recruited for such jobs, so I couldn't help in any case. But he's lucky. Whoever the person is, he's lucky. At least you looked at the sea. Uh, the, the, many know. of them would just ignore it. Yeah, no, of course. And I, I did say to him. I'm like, listen, like this is the, the easiest way for your CV to put, you know, get sent straight to the trash folder. So. And uh, one of the things which uh, people generally face out here is senior management, you know, because of restructuring and because of closing down of various businesses, a lot of senior management uh, employees have lost their job being decades in a role. How would they start their search? And because I know CVs don't work for that profiles because having a CV will not work. I know you mentioned networking, but if you could throw a little bit more light on that, it would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So um, firstly, you know, if you are a senior manager, you probably have a pretty big network of people that you have worked with. So again, I would recommend that you identify some target companies that you are interested in, you know, create a list of all of your previous clients, previous colleagues, and contact them again and, and just see, you know, where you could potentially add value. Another, another thing I would recommend, and that's actually the, the article I will share with you that exactly explains how to do that. Um, I would basically create a, a list of target companies and really research them. Like listen to the earnings call, you know, listen to videos of top executives and just see like, how can you, where can you add your experience? You know, what problems can you solve for this specific company? And then try to connect with decision makers in those specific companies um, and basically offer them, you know, you know, send something personalized, but basically offer yourself as a solution to their problems. But that will only come after you've done the research. So I would recommend connecting directly with the decision makers after researching them and I will share that template with you because you can do that. But again, you need to do your research first, but that's the template that you can use. That would um, be really but, useful. Um, yeah, yeah, I will, I will send it to you straight after this call. Thank you. Uh, so I would like to request Santosh or Anira, if there are any questions that uh, people have asked, would someone like to, um, you know, we can use the time to take some more questions. Is, has, has anyone raised their hands for any questions? There are a please? few questions in uh, the audience. I think you can ask, uh, there's Michael Pinter who has a question. Uh, can you unmute uh, one second? I can't see him. Michael Pinter, would you like to come on screen so that we can see you and you can ask your question, please? Yeah, I'm unmuting him. Uh, Michael, if you're there, I'm uh, trying to unmute you. Really yeah, go ahead. Sorry, my video is uh, not, uh, not working, so I'll just pose my question. Um, no issue. Uh, Margaret, can you hear it? No. Okay, Ma Ma uh, Michael, can you speak a bit louder, please? Thank you. Yeah, uh, can you hear me now? I better, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. So I have a, a question for Margaret. Is uh, For a metal management post, what is the ideal number of uh, uh, pages in a CV? So, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be too long to sh a short. So what is the ideal number for a okay. CV? Interesting. I, I, I would say if you are um, at a, you know, I, I would say in general, a couple of pages is good. Um, you may be, ha you know, you can maybe have three to, well, I would say no more than three pages if you are, are quite senior. Um, but I sometimes, you know, I think one page CV is definitely not enough because it's just a summary. If you, if you are a brand new graduate, great. One CV or, you know, five years of experience, your, your one, one page CV would be great. But in general, I would say two to three pages. Um, you know, maybe if you work in some professions where you have like publications, maybe you work in academia or, you know, in healthcare, then you might have long, longer CV because they typically less, list their publications. But, you know, sometimes I see CVs that are like seven, eight pages. No one will read that. No one will read that and you can't and you clearly can't get to the point, you know, so um, if you have worked for a long time, you know, you really need to just focus on the last 10, 15 years. Um, you might just want to have an early career history section. So I think, you know, it's more about the content, not about the number of pages, but as a rule, I would say maximum three. That's good. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Michael. Thank you. Okay, I believe... Um, Wenzel has a question. Uh, Wenzel, do you want me to unmute you? Uh, um, okay, I'm unmuting Wenzel. Yeah. Yes, Wenzel, Hi. please go ahead. Hi, good evening, uh, Margaret, and uh, good evening, everyone. My question to you is, uh, now, I have been in Dubai for the last seven to eight months. And uh, in between, uh, 
there was covid and that's when everything you know one of my offer letter got deferred and that point of view i upskilled myself in digital branding let's say social media digital branding now uh, coming to the question do you think i should add freelancing whatever i did in the last 8 months in my resume to let a recruiter know that in the last 8 months i was not idle or do i yeah, just go absolutely. and say random absolutely so just to clarify the the job you're looking for is related to the freelancing work you've done uh actually it's into a different field but i did up, i i did upskill myself in uh, digital branding so i was into risk management i did try uh but the problem is they are asking ua experience and uh, i'm not able to get through it yeah and i i do i do this networking i i do uh, i do the linkedin networking but somehow uh, even if i apply for a uh, social media executive although i do branding on linkedin or instagram or facebook the problem here is any corporates asking for one or two years experience so how do i uh, cross to that you know how, how do i move to the next level yeah. of saying that okay i'm interested in this field I, i'm trying to go into the new domain but uh, they uh, i i do not have that experience but i can show you what i did in the last eight yeah. months you know that that's exactly what what i would do this actually um the guy in the us his name is austin velsak and he teaches people how to do this value validation project because he he used to be um uh, like basically he he had some like degree not relevant to anything like i don't know it's something like healthcare or whatever and he actually wanted to work for a tech company so he set up his own um like a social media or digital marketing agency he did some work kind of like you did on the freelancing on the freelance side and then he started approaching companies so he's already delivered results so if you have done something for clients even if it's for free I would definitely mention that. So first in your summary section, I would make sure it's very clear what skills you have, even if you don't have experience. I would mention the specific skills you have in, in say, digital marketing. Um, you know, where, where you kind of upskilled, what is that you are looking for? And then absolutely the freelancing stuff, you can just mention, you know, who you've worked for, what kind of results you've received and mention, make sure you've got some numbers, yes? So that's actually pretty easy to quantify in digital marketing because maybe you've created, you know, this page that led to, you know, very high open rate or you know maybe you've increased rather campaign that resulted in x amount of signups or x amount of twitter followers or whatever you know so that's in a way it's very easy to quantify that experience so yeah absolutely even if it's unpaid experience it's still experience and i think it shows your drive and determination to 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 get that into into that kind of field so i don't think it's impossible at all but i know it's harder it's definitely hard especially now during during the pandemic so but you need the results on your cv you know and I think something you've done on a freelance basis could work very well for an entry level role I guess in that field. Thank you thank you Wenzel for the question thank you Margaret for the clarity. Uh, Margaret you had mentioned that you had some ebooks which help uh, uh, yeah, which can know, be helpful would I'm you like to share a bit details before we take some more questions? Yeah I will actually share the links but just very quickly you know I have these um Uh, online course which i will show yeah online courses yeah okay. it would be nice to know a little get, bit about that you want and i have five videos similar to what we've done today so there are five videos how to get more interviews how to optimize your linkedin profile interviewing techniques salary negotiation and then there are a lot of handouts that you see so you know the the resume template you see i include that the cv template I've got salary negotiation scripts, I've got career networking templates, I've got examples of competency based questions and answers, you know that's very valuable because lots of people don't know how to answer that. So that course is on and basically that course normally costs 97 pounds. Right now I'm selling that during covid just for 39 pounds at $45. I mean I have no idea what that would be, in, you know, your currency but it's not expensive and you get um a free 30 minute coaching session so i will share that link but i just really want to help anyone who's kind of struggling right now needs feedback on their cv so not only you get all of that for extremely low price i mean that's like you know extremely extremely low you will actually get a free um yeah if you kind of buy coaching the, session also so right? that's a, yeah, that's, that's an excellent one video, yeah video coaching session so yeah that's just for for anyone who watches um who watches today but i will send you that link later so yes please thank you that will be really nice yeah, so. uh I had one more question before I can ask for the, the audience. One was how do job seekers get noticed on LinkedIn from the recruiters? Uh, well, honestly, very sim- very similar principles. I actually have the video the whole um webinar in the, in that course, you know, but it's a similar principles. You want to have um a strong, you know, about me section and summary section as well. 
You want to make sure you've got the relevant keywords, just as I was explaining on the CV. You want to have some tangible achievements. And again, the keywords and achievements. And one thing that's kind of different on LinkedIn to your CV that you need a strong headline section. So the tagline section, it used to be just 120 characters, it's now 100, 220 characters. And I would say, don't let it default to your job title. So if you say, you know, like a digital marketing manager, you might want to mention something more specific, you know, digital marketing manager specializing in or mention the results or, <coughs> I mean, I, I actually have a, um, you know, let, let me actually share, because I, I also have the video I did on, on, on LinkedIn that I can share. Um, I, I can share the link with you as well. So I've got some examples in there. I've been to your website and I know there's a gold mine of information all available there. So it's, it's really, really useful. I'm sure if you can share the, I'm sure one of the team members will share your website yeah, and your I'll blog you details. Can just share, you can just share below the, yeah, below the video. Yeah. We love your website and we love the information. It's really, yeah, really. I will, I will share a few links that people will find useful. So.